Good Thursday morning, my friends, and welcome as we come together on this blustereal morning uh, for a service of morning prayer. Our service this morning is from the Book of Alternative Services. My name is Reverend Nancy March. I'm the rector of the parish of St. Mary the Virgin here in St. John's, and I'm grateful that you've joined me this morning. Our service begins on page 45, if you have your service book. If you don't have your service book, you can find an order of service to follow along with on our website, www.stmarythevirgin.ca. Let us take a moment now as we prepare to worship Almighty God. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. My dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. And we pray together, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all of your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship and the Venite together. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills is his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship. Our first reading for the proclamation of God's word this morning is from the book of Ezra, chapter 1, beginning to read at the first verse. <clears throat> In the first year of the king Cyrus of Persia, in order that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia, so that he sent a herald throughout all his kingdom, and also in a written edict declared. Thus says King Cyrus of Persia, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of those among you who are his people, may their God be with them, are now permitted to go up to Jerusalem in Judah and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And let all his survivors, in whatever place they reside, be assisted by the people of their place with silver and gold, with goods and with animals, besides free will offerings for the house of God in Jerusalem. The heads of the families of Judah and Benjamin and the priests of the Levites, everyone whose spirit God had stirred, got ready to go up and rebuild the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. All their neighbors aided them with silver vessels, with gold, with goods, with animals and with valuable gifts, besides all that was freely offered. King Cyrus himself brought out the vessels of the house of the Lord that Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and placed in the house of the gods. King Cyrus of Persia had them released in the, into the charge of Midrida, the treasurer, who counted them out to Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. 
and this was the inventory. Gold basins, 30. Silver basins, 1,000. Knives, 29. Gold bowls, 30. Other silver bowls, 410. Other vessels, 1,000. The total of the gold and silver vessels was 5,400. All these Sheshbazar brought up when the exiles were brought up from Babylonia to Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our psalm this morning is part two of Psalm 37. If you're following along, it begins on page 750 in the Book of Alternative Services. <clears throat> the Lord cares for the lives of the godly, and their inheritance shall last forever. They shall not be ashamed in bad times, and in days of famine they shall have enough. As for the wicked, they shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord, like the glory of the meadows, shall vanish. They shall vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous are generous in giving. Those who are blessed by God shall possess the land, but those who are cursed by him shall be destroyed. Our steps are directed by the Lord. He strengthens those in whose way he delights. If they stumble, they shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds them by the hand. I have been young and now am old, but never have I seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. The righteous are always generous in their lending, and their children shall be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good, and dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves justice. He does not forsake his faithful ones. They shall be kept safe forever, but the offspring of the wicked shall be destroyed. The righteous shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom and their tongue speaks what is right. The law of their God is in their heart and their footsteps shall not falter. The wicked spy on the righteous and seek occasion to kill him. Then the Lord will not abandon them to their land, to their hand, sorry nor let them be found guilty when brought to trial. Wait upon the Lord and keep his way. He will raise you up to possess the land, and when the wicked are cut off, you will see it. I have seen the wicked in their arrogance, flourishing like a tree in full leaf. I went by, and behold, they were not there. I searched for them, but they could not be found. Mark those who are honest, Observe the upright, for there is a future for the peaceable. Transgressors shall be destroyed, one and all. The future of the wicked is cut off. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord will help them and rescue them. He will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because they seek refuge in him. God, our strength. Give us the humility to trust in your loving care and the patience to be faithful in seeking your kingdom, that we may come to share in the inheritance of your saints through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <clears throat> our second reading this morning is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 10, beginning to read at the 25th verse. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you've given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell into the hands of robbers, 
who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him. And when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put, them, put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now as we just heard in the reading, we also affirm our faith with the words of Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. For our prayers this morning, I've selected... Litany number nine on page 117, the prayers for the morning. Let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for a day of fulfillment and peace. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to teach us to love others as he has loved us. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for peace and justice in the world. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen and relieve those who are in need. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to renew the church through the power of his life-giving spirit. Lord, have mercy. And also a prayer for our upcoming synod. Gracious and loving God, you raise up leaders in your church, blessing their labors both for us and among us. We thank you for calling men and women, giving them gifts of faithfulness, compassion, and vision. Bless this diocese as we prepare to elect a new bishop, those who will offer themselves as nominees, the Venerable Josiah Noel, the Venerable Samuel Rose, the Venerable Charlene Taylor, the Reverend Jonathan Rowe, and the Reverend Canon Gerald Westcott. Give us courageous and discerning minds that we may trust in your providence and recognize a servant leader that you are calling by your spirit. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. And our collect for this morning. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. And my friends, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look with favor upon us all and grant us his peace this day and forevermore. Amen. 
when my day got off to a great start because you joined me for prayer and I pray that yours has as well. I hope you have a wonderful day. May God bless you. And until we see again, be safe and from where you are. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.